Hi, this is Rhett with TestingTheory.com, and today I want to talk to you about moving from validating assumptions to data-driven optimization. One of the challenges that we have as optimizers is helping other people move away from their opinions and assumptions and getting them to also follow a data-driven approach. And so the question is, how do you do that? How do you help those around you, other people who you work with, let go of their assumptions, let go of their opinions, and start using data? Today, I want to show you a few ways that I like to do it, and we'll talk about the importance of using a data-driven approach rather than your assumptions. I recently just had two experiences where people were trying to validate their assumptions. And being the data-driven tester that I am, I initially pushed back, and I wanted to help them see that they were using, they were basing their decisions on assumptions and opinions. So the first experience I had, I was working with a developer, and the dev team had more resources. And so the dev team wanted to start developing an experience that we had in our queue to be tested. We had like five variations, the test was just about to launch, but the dev team was ready, and so the lead developer said, which of these variations do you think is the winner? You probably can guess which one's right. We probably want to start developing that one based on whatever you think. So they had good intentions. They wanted to start developing something. They wanted to use their time wisely, but they wanted to develop an experience that we hadn't tested yet. So in my reply, I said I didn't know which one would win. And even though I've seen lots of patterns of testing, you can, you're never right for sure until you actually get the data back and you test it for yourself. We talked a little bit about us being the third party unbiased group that didn't want to prove something right. We just want to see what the data said and how important it was to let go of our opinions and assumptions because if we have opinions and assumptions, then we're more likely to be biased in our interpretation of the results. After talking about it for a minute, he was like, yeah, I see your point. We should, we'll just wait for the data. And so it was a good experience to help him move from validating his assumption of which one do you think is a winner so we could develop, develop it to just letting the data tell us a story, even if it meant he had to find something else for his developers to do. The second experience I want to share with you happened post-test. We've been asked to run a test by a client and the client got the results back and we were talking about the data and they said, great, that's the winner we thought would win. We just wanted to run the test to validate that we we're doing the right thing. So at least this client used testing and data to find the right answer. The problem was he was validating his assumption and that leads to us not trying other opportunities. We only tried what they thought would win and so by validating what he, what we, he thought would win, it was actually ended up being a long-term disservice. The test was a very interesting one and we learned some important things. And after the test, we were like, hey, we could try this and this and this. There's a lot of testing opportunities here. And the client was like, no, we're good. We just want to validate that what we implemented was correct. And, and that was the last we heard of him. He didn't want it to do any more. There's a danger in validating your assumptions with testing. As true site optimizers, as A-B testers and conversion rate optimizers, we know that the data is most important and we want to make the user experience great. And so we use good data to make decisions for businesses that we work with. But what do you do as the optimizer who's data-driven when the people around you aren't using data the correct way because they're validating their opinions, they're validating their assumptions, and you want to move them to a more data-driven approach? I want to share three keys, three things that I do to help other people around me become more data-driven when I notice that they're in their validation and their assumption mode. The first thing that I love to do is get people voting. Now, you've, you've probably done this before, where you get people to vote on the variations they think will win before you show them the test results. But I like to do it in the meeting. We're about to review the test results. It's coming, it's right now. And before we see what the data says, I want them to, to commit physically, even by raising their hand and saying, we think this one will win. win. Now, why do I do that? This is important because part of getting people away from validating their assumptions is helping them see that they're wrong. One way to help them see they're wrong in a friendly, fun environment is to help them is to have them vote on the test experiences. I still remember one time I did this with UnderArmor.com. I had flown out and I was doing an on-site meeting with them. And luckily for us, one of the VPs of marketing, one of the guys in charge of everything of all the teams we were working with came into the meeting at this time. And we were just about to review some test results. And I had the VP and everyone else in the room vote on which ex variation they thought would be the winner. Surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, the VP was wrong every time. And it was this, you could tell that, other than maybe being a little embarrassed because it was fun, we weren't like pointing people out and causing grief and drama, but there was a self-evaluation happening within the VP who was very confident otherwise. For him to take note that he wasn't correct, that he was guessing wrong, was a moment of reflection that you could see happening. As I was presenting, I'd see the change in him, even though no one around him could see it because they were watching me as I was presenting. 
So that's the value of getting people to vote. You want them to be wrong. You want them to, to challenge their own assumptions. When someone thinks something will win and then they're wrong, then you allow them to take a different approach other than their assumptions, their opinions, and the validation that lots of people have. Now, to do this correctly, you need to make sure it's fun. You're not trying to call people out. It's like, oh, you were wrong and you were wrong. Maybe that's for your organization, I don't know. But you also have to be careful with this because some people will guess correctly. And if they consistently guess correctly over and over and over, they get to a point where they may think they don't need testing. And so you can't control if people are going to guess right, but that is a danger of having people constantly guess. If some people are constantly right, they might not see the value of testing because they might think they know the right answer. That could happen. It's not likely to happen because most people are wrong because no one knows the right answer before you test it. The other danger with this is if you're testing things that are obvious and you're not running good discipline testing with a good business question and variations to answer that, you might actually have obvious winners when in reality you need better variations. And so you have to make sure your testing strategies is on par if you're going to do testing or voting before your test results. So that's the first key. Do voting, let people challenge their assumptions, and by physically committing to a vote, and doing it in front of their peers and the people they work with, it allows them to question their own opinions and assumptions. The second thing that I like to do to help people move past validating their assumptions and opinions into more of a data-driven approach is what I like to think of as verbal reinforcement. Now what this means is when people are talking about a variation or an idea that they really like, and they'll often say things like, I think this one's going to win, or I really like this one, so one thing that I'll do to verbally reinforce with them to help them see that I'm on their side, but also to kind of nudge them the, along the path of using better data is to say something like, yeah, that might be a great variation. It'll be exciting to see the data to see if it is the winner. Other th phrases I've used to verbally reinforce with someone and help them move them along this path is something like, yeah, that might be important, but I don't know yet because I haven't isolated that variable. The point here is you want to agree with them that what they're thinking is important might be important. You don't want to dismiss it and say, well, the data will tell us or, you know, you want, to, you want to be on their side. You want to say, yeah, that might be important, or I think you're right, that could be really valuable, but, or, and, I'm excited to see the data tell us which one's the winner. Use an and statement to say, and I can't wait to see what the data says. And, and maybe you're right, this can be really exciting. So, so go with their excitement, go with some of the emotion they have, but allow yourself that window of questioning and waiting on the data to make a decision. And then you move them one step away from the, the validating their opinions and assumptions. If you have a really good relationship and people understand your role inside the organization or the service that you offer, you can get a little more intense and you can say something like I said earlier where I can just come out and say, hey, you know what? I try to be the third party, unattached, uh, data-driven person to help you evaluate your data so there's no bias from my end on interpreting the results and helping you get good results. So sometimes you can just come out and say the your stance, like, hey, I really just wanna see what the data says and I'm very data-driven. And so that immediately is a sign to them that they were being opinion-driven while you're trying to be data-driven. Again, that's more of a, a strong way of saying, you know, I usually like to, to be excited with them, to affirm what they're saying, and then help them see another way of doing it. So that's the second thing I like to do. Um, use verbal affirmations, use these phrases to go with them and help them see there's, there's more than just validating an assumption, but you can use data as well. A third thing that I like to do to help people move away from validating assumptions to a data-driven approach is the open-ended question. Now, I use open-ended questions when I hear someone is, is clearly not thinking about things from a data-driven way or they're really in their assumptions or opinions. I'll say things in more of an exploratory way to, to see and gauge where their, their mind is at. And so I'll say something like, oh, what other variations have you tried? Or what other variations have you tested? Or what other ideas have you come up with? I want to see with an open-ended question if they're stuck on one idea. And if they are, and they say, well, this is the only thing I've tried, I'm like, oh, well, maybe we should try something else. But if they're not, if they have, if they have thought of other things, that it gives you the option to say, okay, maybe they're not totally stuck on their opinions and assumptions, but they are trying to explore a little bit, and their explorations just haven't been that good. Another open-ended question that I like is something that refers to the what if this one wins. So, so if you have some variations, and I say, well, what if this variation is the winner? What does that teach you, or what will you do with that? It's an open-ended question to help them get you thinking about the possibility, and I often like to ask that open-ended question on a variation they don't like. So I'll ask them, hey, if this one is the winner, even though you don't like it, what will that do for your business, or how will that help you learn about your visitors? And that open-ended question gets them thinking about the possibilities and whether it should be tested or not. Another open-ended question that I like to use um, in conjunction with the voting idea that we talked about earlier 
is when someone will vote on a variation they think will win, rather than just saying, great, you voted, let's see what, what the answer is or what the data says, I will often ask them why they think something won, will, will win, why they think a variation is important or it will win. And usually what they'll come back and they'll say, they'll give a reason, they almost always give a reason. It's not just, I don't know, or I think, it's they have some reason to justify their stance. And as humans, we like to do that. We justify what we think. And so this justification does a couple things for us. One, it helps them think more deeply about their opinion to try and get outside of the opinion. Um, you also might say it might reinforce the opinion if they come up with a really, really good reason. But that open-ended questioning of why something, why they think something will win is also a great way to help them come up with new ideas, to challenge their opinions, because it gets them thinking outside of their, their set opinion. So that's the third thing I like to do. I like to ask open-ended questions to help the people I work with think about the other possibilities that they may have not tried so they can move farther away from just being stuck on their opinions and their assumptions. So those are a few things you can try when you're working with clients, your team members, or departments, and you wanna move them from, being, from validating their assumptions to more of a data-driven approach. Use voting, help them challenge their opinions or, and question their being right or wrong. Use the verbal reinforcement to, to get excited with them, but also show them that you don't know because you don't have the data. And use open-ended questions. Use those to really help them think more about the possibilities than just the thing that they're, they have that they like. There may be other things you can do to help create a culture of moving towards data and optimization, but these are a few things that have helped me as I've worked in a culture and with companies that have been very opinion-based and very validating their assumptions based. And we've, we've been able to move people down that path of using more data. So I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, please give me that thumbs up so I know that you liked it. You can also visit me at testingtheory.com if this video was valuable to you and you want to see more videos like this and even look at courses that can help you, you can come to testingtheory.com where you can see the more things just like this, learn the testing strategies for A-B testing, for conversion rate optimization, and where you can improve your business by by using data-driven approaches. We also offer free consulting if you're interested in joining it for a consulting class. Again, thanks for joining me, and remember that with testingtheory.com, you get better testing and more conversions.